how to get every prayer answered, right? He said, well, I wish you'd have started with that at the beginning. Well, we're here now, okay? <clears throat> now, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And I want to underline hears us there. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, you get that? If he hears us, if he hears whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. You hear that? So really all you have to do is make sure God hears you. If he hears you, then you've got the answer. You got that? That's pretty good, right? So if he hears you, now how does he hear you? If you ask according to his will. So it literally gives the idea here that if we don't ask according to his will, he doesn't even hear the prayer. Think about that. Now, but he says here if, that we know this. This is a confidence. This is how we have faith in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, whatever we're asking, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Notice the word petition. Now, again, we'll talk about this a little bit later on, but this moves the idea of prayer into the area almost of legality, right? Now, I don't want to go too far with this at this point because I don't want you thinking in terms of legalities per se, but you do have to realize that God is just and because he has an enemy and because of the workings of the way things are, there are legalities in prayer and there are things by way God can do things. Just as we said before, what if you bind on earth is bound in heaven, right? Well, that's a legality. In other words, God can't initiate Man has to initiate. So God has to get a man to agree with him and pray before God can literally do something. Right? Now, there's details to this again that we will look at. And you don't want to take that to the extreme, but you want to see what God can do and what he can't do. Uh, many people, John Wesley was one of them, actually said, it appears as though God can do nothing on the earth unless he gets a man to pray. Right? And that's a strong statement. So... Number two on this of how uh, to get every prayer answered is James chapter 4, verse 2. He says, you lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. See, m many things we do in our own strength that we would not have to fight for if we just ask. If we just turned it toward God and made it a, a matter of of relationship with God rather than just trying to get it on our own. He says in verse 3, You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. Then he says, You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwells in us lusteth to envy? Now, we'll go back over this in just a second. But notice that this was written by James really to new believers. So they were unlikely to know the will of God. So he was saying, this is why you're asking. Remember before in 1 John, he said that we ask according to the will of God. Here he says, you ask and you ask amiss. Why? Because you don't know the will of God because they were probably new believers. So the idea, the fundamental thing here is know the will of God. Find the will of God. If you always, because we know, as we said before, all the promises of God are in Christ, yes, and in him, amen. Is that right? So if that's true, then the way to start is with the promises of God, because we know those promises are the will of God. And if we start with those promises as the end result, God, this is where we're going. This is what we want. Then we know we have it because we know we're asking according to his will. Amen?